Okay. Before we even get into this, I'm gonna be real. Full disclosure. I'm not really that into Star Wars. But, I am, however, a really big fan of Childish Gambino, which is Donald Glover's rap alias. And, um, it's so sad that Childish Gambino has a debilitating illness. He, it's fatal. He is a sick boy for life. His swag is in a hospice. Have I established my, my street cred in that I really enjoyed this man's music? Even Awaken My Love, which was technically sort of more of a funk record. More R&B, less rapping. But you know what? He, he doesn't talk. He's just a rapper. Okay, I fully established that I am a real fan. So why did I buy this? Lando comic. If I really don't really care. See, when I think of Star Wars, I think of the original trilogy as more of a technical achievement in movie making. Like, anybody who likes movies definitely needs to watch the original trilogy. Um, well, do you really need to watch Return of the Jedi? It's been a long time since I've watched them. But the reason I bought this is I see this as a childish Gambino. I'm gonna hang it up. So, like a little bit of a poster. Because rappers have bad merch. All they do is make tour merch. And then it's, tour merch is typically really lazy. I mean, Odd Future had great tour merch. I had, I had a couple of those shirts. But, um, yeah, and I went and looked on his website. Apparently he's going on tour and he just has shirts. They're just tour shirts and they just say childish on it. It's not a cool design, and I swear to God, any rapper you like, they don't make posters. They'll sell CDs and maybe a vinyl. I don't know how they haven't cracked the merch posters, good shirts aspect of it. At least metal bands typically have good merch year-round that you can just get. So I'm seeing this as a childish Gambino piece of merch, because he doesn't. He doesn't have good merch. What the f- I'm just saying, if you're watching this and you're a rapper, get good merch. You know what I'm saying? Donald, if you're there, I love you, dog. But you gotta get get some good posters, get some good arts. Okay, so. Also, I'm probably trying to get on that, that Lando hate bandwagon for a little I mean, I made that Robot Chicken video. That I thought was pretty damn funny. But alright, let's get in this. I actually had to watch a video on original on um, Billy D. Williams because I could not remember how Lando's personality was at all. So we're going to get into this. I'll skip this page because it's nothing. And then we see him, which I feel like get, get used to this expression because I feel like this is the expression he always has. And I think it's from the trailers. He does this in the movie a lot. And yeah, so he's contemplating, he's contemplating a Severian skin couches and a wet bar with a tactfully huge Adronian ink portrait of me in the foreground to accent crystal game tables. And we got L3 over here, which I know, I know she's got some, got her own problems. But, but he, and he's talking about making, writing a book called the Calrissian Chronicles so the universe can fully absorb my prodigiousness. Now this scene, I've, okay, after watching like the clips of him from the original trilogy, um, I understand he's a ladies man, I do remember that, he's super smooth, super suave. I don't remember this sort of level of narcissism about getting a, an inked portrait of himself. Uh, don't know, don't know about that. That seems a little out of character, but you know, maybe young Lando was a little bit, I mean, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm older and I'm at, I'm at peak narcissism for me right now. It's only going to get worse from here. So L3 is reminding him, she doesn't, she doesn't, she's not too bad in this, but there comes a moment where you're like, all right, let's tone it down a little bit, lady. It's not very elite behavior of you. And she, she doesn't like the idea of portraits and skin couches and those things because the uh, defense and communication systems need upgrading. And he's like, you don't understand what it takes to be me. Oh, Lando. And I don't remember him referring to himself in the third person. That That's a special type of person. Lando requires an environment of comfort to balance the constant dangers that swirl about him. And although the shields and comms could use some tweaks and tucks, women, credits, and games of chance are the pillars of life. And life is short. Wah, wah. So he just wants these upgrades for his ship. And then we cut to this place called 
Kul Grun, and we see starship troopers and um, sort of, I mean, it's like a factory assembly line. I mean, you definitely get the feeling that these people aren't being paid, and they're, and this guy, he is communicating with his daughter, Christus, and she is, um, I guess on the same planet, uh, Kul Grun, but she's communicating with her father, and she's got a couple guys with her. And he's t communicating with her that the Stormtrooper security force is turning over in three days. While their numbers are low, we can overtake them and gain our freedom. If we get the weapons, we need, that is. So they're planning uh, a coup, a mutiny. They're planning for their freedom, a breakout. So she needs to get the weapons. She uh, tells them not to worry. We are Petrusian? Petrusian? I don't remember anybody looking like this, but I have I watched Rogue One like a year ago and I kinda didn't like it. So, so yeah, I haven't watched any of the other stuff and I'm probably not going to. Um so she says she tells her, her crew, we need arms and a way to smuggle them past those stormtroopers. We've been smuggling across the galaxy for years, why is this any different? And this one has got a lot of layers. We need to get our people off the outpost. Outpost. Once we attack, the stormtroopers will notify the Empire, who will send reinforcements. That's the problem. The Empire's reach is vast. There was a smuggler who... Tra <laughs> I said that weird. There was a smuggler who traded arms with us shortly after the Empire seized control of Petrusia. Prus Petrusia? See, the, the names in Star Wars, you just... It's like... You just gotta guess. He bypassed their defenses with ease. He could do this, but he won't come cheap. Wonder who that is. Wonder who who could be. <laughs> you know, is it weird that like when I first read this, I was like, huh? <laughs> like I temporarily forgot. So we see Batuv. Batuv. Han is haggling for some of those uh, Amarone skin, which I feel like don't have skin couches. I, I just don't think that's a good look. Like, imagine if we referred to as leather couches as skin couches. That industry would crumble. So he's haggling with this guy. He's saying maybe it's a Zelk hut. See, this is all like nonsense words <laughs> to me. You calling me a liar? Haven't said it out loud, but I'm thinking it for sure. See, that seems Lando to me. Your moxie astounds me, Lando. Although, any more jabber, and maybe I'll fetch a tidy sum for Calrissian hide. <laughs> I like that. I like that joke, but he's using words like moxie and jabber? I don't... It's old-timey. I feel like, at some point, they make laws in the future banning banning these this type of vocabulary. Moxie, and you can't name your daughter Scout. Like, there are rules in place. So... They finally settle on two credits, which seems super low. I'm thinking dead space. I'm thinking like thousands of credits for power nodes and such. So then we see Chrysis approaches him, and she's looking for the great Lando Calrissian. And this is the, I think, just the um, quintessential current year Lando expression that I think is just going to exist for like maybe another year or something. So, um... She's trying, so, so, are you, so are you Calrissian, depends, are you a fan or a bounty hunter? Each scenario offers its own individual response. I'm sure you understand. See, I like that. I like this sort of dialogue. She tells him that she will pay him, but she has to free everyone, get her father, and you gotta deal with the storm ship troopers. He says, I'm a businessman, not a martyr, and she makes this just ugly ass face. I don't know what the hell. So, so he, she, he wants no part of it because it's just like the risk reward is pretty damn low. So then she offers up two thousand, a thousand credits up front, another five hundred. Uh, when the deal is done, and he says, "If I say no, your friends over there are gonna try and convince me otherwise." Which, yeah, she brought her homies. I mean, let's think about Lando. He doesn't really have homies. He doesn't. He doesn't know that. If we get an origin film, maybe he will have homies and then lose. Homie. Uh, honestly, I do love Childish Gambino as an artist, as a musician. Again, I love the album Camp. I don't think I put it in my top 10 hip-hop albums, but it's definitely top 20. At least just based on the amount I re-listened to it. But um, 
I wouldn't watch a Lando movie. Like, I was surprised when people were making a big deal about him being in uh, Han Solo. I was like, is he that, like, that big of a character to people? And I guess yes and no. I think people just get blinded by that Donald Glover smile. So he rejects her offer, and then she offers him, you know what, how about, how about we just, I buy you a drink, and he's like, a drink? <laughs> Why not? Oh, man. Does he have, like, a monotooth? He's got, like, a monotooth. So they're, they're, um, they're at the bar, they're schmoozing, having a little, having some good time, and when an alien approaches who recognizes Lando, which is never good for our boy Lando, and apparently Lando cheated him. Uh, at a poker game, and he wants his fucking credits. And Lando's like, hey man, you lost. Deal with it. He this says exactly that. He says, deal with it, bitch. It's very, It's just comes out of nowhere. Really, it's insane. Everyone looks at him like, whoa, we don't use that sort of language in the future. That was banned along with the words moxie and chutzpah. So, um... They don't really get into a scuffle, but she sort of leads him away, and that's his way of accepting the deal that she sort of gets him away from the alien who's coming for him. And she gives him a kiss because, yeah, why not? And then we get into, then we get where they're aboard the ship. And this is where L3, um, Leet, for those hackers out there, um, he's, she's trying to convince him that they should do the mission because it's about freedom and everything. And she, she says this, which, As such, we droids toil through a meaningless existence, while conscious of said meaningless, meaninglessness. Oh, man. If given the opportunity to aid in the freeing of my or any race, I'd gladly do so. For free? For free? Lando's about getting paid. And I think Donald Glover might be about getting paid. Because if you accept a role in Star Wars, you got that gig for fucking life. I mean, I hope, I hope Donald Glover never ends up 40 years from now where he's doing like little conventions, signing, signing stuff. But if he needs it, that's there. So that's why I like him in Star Wars. Like, oh, he's got a job for life. Good. 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 Because who knows? Who knows what the next album will be? Were I a battle droid rather than a navigator, this conversation would be abrupt. Look, I'm a legend. Kinda. What? I feel like, I feel like Lando is more like that, like, quiet, cool. Like, you just look at him and you know he's cool. This Lando is telling me he's cool, and I don't know about that. The wet bar, those couches, and most importantly, my portrait. Oh, shouldn't you say Lando's portrait? Deserve, deserve to exist. Deserve. I feel like that's, like, I think, uh, a an oil painting portrait of yourself? That's peak narcissism right there. It was so narcissistic that it went on for hundreds of years. And then someone's like, we gotta put a stop to this. And then it just faded out. We don't do it anymore. Well, some people. Some people do. Awful people. If you go into someone's house and they have a straight up oil painting of themselves or their family, get, the, get out of there. You're not welcome there. You are there for some sort of dinner where they tried to find the worst person. Just get the fuck out. <laughs> Deserve to exist. And proper adoration takes credits. And then she says, If you don't pay back Bruchon, which is the alien in the bar that I skipped the pages of, because Gaddis skipped those pages, even if you get all those things, you'll really be a legend? <laughs> because you'll be dead. No, kinda. Well, would he? Would he really be? Get that legendary status? So eventually they, um, they do board the ship. All of them. Kistris, yeah, Christus, my bad, my bad. So eventually he, he, he does the math. Which, I mean, he should have been doing the math, like, well before they got into space. I mean, come on. When he realizes that she doesn't have the credits that she agreed to pay for him, and she says, you know, my hope was that once you knew of, my, of the money's purpose, you'd lower your fee. Ooh, you hoped wrong, lady. My hide's on the line. The fee remains the same. I'm truly sorry. Tough to convey how good it feels to have someone share my pain. She's... I feel like she's not as awful in the movie. But... Because I've seen... I've heard EVS talk about how her in the movie and telling like Han to like get out of the seat. And that's kind of ridiculous. Just She just seems like sassy here. 
And then that little monologue about the, I'd free anybody. Bitch, you are, like, a future trash can, so let's just calm down, alright? I mean, what are you gonna free R2 from? What does he need freedom for? Enslave all the R2 units. And then eventually we get a couple of beeps, TIE fighters show up, and we get a couple cool scenes. Um, yeah, I'll show this. We got this spread here. These look great. I, I love these. This looks off. This looks off to me. Keep in mind, I haven't watched a Star Wars movie until, like, last year, and the Millennium Falcon wasn't in that one, so this, this looks off, right? Or is it, like, am I just not seeing it from the correct angle? I just feel like this should be more up, like, instead of going like that, go like that. It should be thicker? Or unless it's at an angle that I, my brain isn't, isn't recognizing or something. I like this, I like the background. Like, it looks pretty great, but this just looks off to me. I don't know what it is. So we get into them, they're yelling at each other about how, you know, the comm systems aren't great, the defense aren't great, because uh, Lando wants to fillet himself <laughs> and jerk off on skin couches, which Lando, come on, girl. And all the while, he, he and L3 are bickering. He comes up with a plan. And it includes this. I mean, I love the TIE Fighters. They look great. He comes up with some maneuvers of dropping and the TIE Fighters, they explode. And then he makes this face, which, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that meme of the kid sitting at the computer holding a pin. Like the white kid with like spiked hair being like, yeah. And then eventually they realize that they're on Kolagroon, where her family is and all the prisoners are. But I mean, I, I can tell you right now I'm not picking up the next issue. Just, if you actually like Star Wars. I mean, if you ask me if I like Star Wars, I'll be like, yeah, sure. But, yeah, I'm kind of lying. Does, is this interesting? If you, like, for real like it, even if you, regardless, is this a good Star Wars comic? Like, I don't have, I don't have the necessary tools to, to make that, to make that decision. 